It's an alert day tonight into Saturday. Snow is on its way to southern Wisconsin. All of the details coming up. And some good news when it comes to COVID hospitalizations across Wisconsin. We're talking with Dr. Jeff Pothoff about the latest on cases in our state. Plus vaccine timeline. The FDA is going through its final steps to get a vaccine to those who need it most. What Americans will start getting those first doses? This is News 3 Now This Morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Friday, December 11th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Stanford. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Leah Linshide. Hattie McLean is keeping an eye on an alert day for your weekend and some snow slushy rain mix starting today. Hattie, what do we know so far? Yeah, well, we know that the precipitation is expected to move in a little bit earlier than what we thought yesterday. So if you have some running around to do, you might want to get it done earlier rather than later today. That alert day, as Leah mentioned, is in effect again starting tonight through Saturday. That's when our mix will change over to some snow. It's going to be a very heavy and wet snow. Temperatures will be in the 30s, so it'll create some slushy and even slippery conditions on the roads if they're untreated. The National Weather Service in Milwaukee and La Crosse have issued winter weather advisories for parts of our area. These are the locations where they expect to see the heaviest snow and it is likely going to be a fairly narrow band of some heavier snow totals that move in tonight into Saturday. So here's a look across our area. There's going to be a wide range of snow totals anywhere from one to seven inches. Seven would be the very high end. I think most of Dane County will likely come into the three to five inch range. There is going to be some wind threat with this storm on Saturday. Could cause some blow and drifting in open areas, but again, the snow is going to be a little heavier, so that's not going to be a huge issue with this particular storm. Take a look at Doppler track and you'll see that that precipitation is getting closer and it's in the form of rain and snow across Iowa this morning. That uh, precipitation is approaching the Mississippi River Valley as we speak, so look for some rain and snow to move into the Madison area before lunchtime today, obviously within the next couple of hours for the southwestern corner of the state. Here's a look at our future track forecast model and again doing a pretty good job showing you the earlier onset of that precipitation. Now that rain snow line is going to set up somewhere in our area through the afternoon into the evening. Anywhere south and east of that line, you're not going to see as much snow with that rain continuing a little bit longer. Through the day on Saturday, it's likely going to change the snow for everybody eventually and then come to an end during the evening. Here's a look at total amounts. Again, you see that darkest blue shaded color, pretty small area receiving those heavier snow totals, but we could see amounts in the six to maybe almost seven inches in some spots. Again, those will be isolated amounts. Most areas will be three to five inches through Dane County. Our current conditions this morning, 35 degrees here in Madison. There is a northeasterly wind though, making it feel like it's in the mid twenties this morning. Temperatures are quite mild across the entire area. Camp Douglas is the only spot at freezing this morning. Everyone else is at least above the freezing point. Temps over the next 12 hours will stay in the mid to upper 30s through the afternoon. So expect that rain and snow to continue right through the evening commute. Later on tonight is when I see a changeover to all snow for most of the area. Areas south and east of Madison may see that rain last longest. That's where snow totals will be pretty light. On Sunday, skies clear out, but it stays cold. So any snow that sticks on the ground on Saturday is going to last for at least a couple of days. And we're getting close to Christmas, guys. That next weekend is the weekend before Christmas. Hey, I don't think too many people would mind some snow that sticks around. Hattie, thank you very much. And folks, you're going to want to stick with us because we will be tracking this snow all morning, both on air and online. You can get updates from News 3 Now's First Worn Weather team throughout the day as we see that storm start to move in. Just download our First Worn Weather app. 603 right now. I'm Josh Ryder working from home. Breaking overnight, a woman is in the hospital this morning after being shot by police in Milwaukee County. It happened around 915 last night in Wauwatosa. According to the department's Facebook page, police were responding to reports of a woman attacking someone. When police got there, they say the woman was involved in an altercation with police. An officer then shot the woman. Wauwatosa police did not say if the woman had a weapon or if they attempted non-lethal measures before shooting her. Police also did not say if the officers involved were put on administrative leave. 
We do know the woman was taken to the hospital for her injuries, but we do not know her condition this morning. Stay with News for Now this morning for updates. We are waiting to learn more from the Wisconsin National Guard this morning about the death of a 115th fighter pilot after a crash in the UP this week. The pilot was found dead yesterday after a days long search. The 115th says it was conducting routine training when the Truex based F-16 Fighting Falcon went down in the Hiawatha National Forest. The crash is still under investigation and the pilot hasn't been identified yet. Wing Commander Colonel Bart Van Roo says, quote, now is a time for mourning and the entire Wisconsin National Guard stands with the pilot's family as we grieve the loss of a great airman and a patriot. Our conversation, uh, coronavirus rather headlines now. We continue to break the daily record for the number of new coronavirus deaths. The United States recorded more than 3,300 deaths yesterday. Not only is that the deadliest day of the pandemic so far, it is the most deaths in a day in U.S. history. The national weekly average for deaths is more than 2,300 deaths a day. That's also a new record. If current trends continue, more than 300,000 Americans will have died from the virus by Monday. With the current surge in cases and deaths, the CDC is predict updating rather its prediction model. The agency now says it expects the virus to kill more than 362,000 Americans by January 1st. That's about 70,000 deaths over the next three weeks. This prediction comes as health ex experts expect new cases to spike even further as people travel for the holidays. Public health officials in Dane County have some good news for our area. While case activity in Dane County is still high, it is plateauing. The number of new COVID-19 infections throughout Dane County has been statistically stable in the last two weeks. This means that after the decrease that started about two weeks ago, we have plateaued at a high level. Now here's a look at where Wisconsin stands this morning. The state reported 48 new deaths yesterday, as well as 160 new hospitalizations. State health officials confirm more than 4,000 new cases. The seven-day positivity rate has been declining this week. It now sits just below 29%. Thanksgiving was two weeks ago, and we have not seen the surge that many people were fearing. Dr. Jeff Pothoff with UW Health is joining us now to talk about this. Dr. Pothoff, we just heard from Public Health Madison, Dane County about the plateau in numbers. What does that tell you? This is good news. I think all of us were really worried that we would have this big spike coming out of Thanksgiving. And although other parts of the country are seeing exactly that, we're not seeing that here in Wisconsin right now. Uh, and that's great news because hospital systems in Wisconsin were having a really rough time. So, you know, we're still close to the edge of the cliff, but we've taken a step back and that breathing room is welcome. Could we still see a surge? And what about Christmas? Yeah, it's possible that we could still see a bit of a surge. Uh, oftentimes, people who get COVID-19, it takes a few days for them to develop symptoms that are severe enough to get a test or to need hospitalization. So we're still looking at this next week, although we would have thought that we'd seen cases already. Now, Christmas, uh, if people stayed home during Thanksgiving, uh, if they can stay home over Christmas, uh, you know, that might be the last big holiday uh, where they have to be so locked down for the holiday because uh, vaccines are just, you know, imminent on the horizon. Yeah, once we do get a vaccine, when do you think it'll make a substantial difference? It'll really depend on when a large number of people get vaccinated. You know, one of the things we don't know yet about the vaccine, uh, we know that it keeps you from getting sick from the disease. You're, you're probably not gonna die of COVID-19 if you get a vaccine. We don't know if you're still able to pass it to other people who haven't been va vaccinated. Uh, so we need to wait for that data to come out. Until that data comes out, even though you may be protected, it'd be good to, to be masked, to be distanced, so that you don't infect other people who haven't been vaccinated yet. All right, Dr. Jeff Pothoff with UW Health, thank you as always. You bet. All right, we will talk with Dr. Pothoff again here in a half an hour too. The Wisconsin Department of Corrections says that a total of 19 inmates have now died of COVID in the state's prison system. That is up from 14 last week. The number of positive tests also increased. As of Wednesday, the DOC reported nearly 9,500 positive results, with more than 1,100 of them still being active, though numbers do not include prison staff. A coronavirus vaccine on the verge of being approved in the U.S. An FDA advisory committee voted yesterday to endorse Pfizer's vaccine for emergency use. The FDA is expected to follow the panel's guidance and is promising to act quickly. 
Pfizer is ramping up production, too, to meet the demand for the vaccine. The government plans to supply it to states based on population. The FDA will meet Sunday to vote on granting the vaccine an emergency use authorization. And if granted, the first doses should be administered by Thursday at the latest. A spokesperson for UW Health says we could start to see the first round of vaccines come to Madison early next week or maybe even earlier. Right now, local health care providers are still working through some of those details. There are a lot of the specific details that needed to be hammered out today and will continue to be hammered out in the coming days before we're actually giving vaccine. So I think those are important. They're not just mere formalities. Those are issues that are really relevant. But, you know, we were expecting this, you know, over a period of time. UW Health is expecting several thousand doses in its first round. It's still unclear how many will be distributed across South Central Wisconsin. Meanwhile, the FDA's authorization of Pfizer's vaccine is only a temporary measure right now, but the company says it plans to make its use permanent. Reuters reports they're planning to apply for full U.S. approval of the vaccine by April of next year. If granted, it would be the first COVID vaccine to seek and receive full use authorization. 610 is your time right now on this Friday morning. All is quiet so far, but things are going to be changing. Let's start off with what's happening right now here in Madison as you head out the door. Across other Wisconsin, no issues out there, no crashes or major incidents to report so far this morning. The Madison area roads looking A-OK -okay as we kick things off before this weekend. A couple of brake lights popping up in and around the downtown area, but you shouldn't encounter any problems. That will change later on today, though, as we've been tracking this winter storm. There's your travel forecast. Again, morning commute should be fine. That light rain snow developing later this morning, giving you the yellow light for much of the afternoon. And then the tail end of the evening commute, you can see the red light there. Things are going to be slowing down as we head into this evening. That's your first one traffic. Thanks, Josh. 611 now coming up. Patty is continuing to track the first big snowstorm of the season, hitting right around rush hour today. She's in with another update. And later, creating bonds and changing lives. A local group's efforts to help young people in Madison. Stay with us. Plan a perfect staycation at the Madison Concourse Hotel and Governor's Club. Bring the family to enjoy our indoor pool or reconnect with the couple's getaway in our Governor's Club. Serving complimentary cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, and breakfast. Gift certificates are available. Visit concoursehotel.com. Hurry into Fleet Farm to get the best deals of the week. Save big on things like all men's field and forest shirts. 30% off our low fleet price. Whole cashews or deluxe mixed nuts. One pound bags, only $5.99. And select Cooper tires. Buy three, get the fourth free. Plus, enter our snow removal sweepstakes for a chance to win a 24-inch Husqvarna snow thrower. See store or visit fleetfarm.com for details. Fleet Farm, we've got you covered. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. For all your heating and cooling needs in Dane County, call Faro Heating. Visit our Al Byer showroom in Janesville. Serving South Central Wisconsin for over 60 years. At Papa Murphy's, we make fresh pizza that you bake at home. Because home is where the fun is. Right now, get the chicken garlic pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's. Change the way you pizza. Updating your home? Looking for that fresh new piece? See what's in store at Habitat Restore Dane County. Discover one-of-a-kind finds and discounts on appliances, furniture, and building supplies. Whatever your project, do yourself a favor and visit Habitat Restore. We drive everywhere to help our son reach his dream of becoming an elite swimmer. So we enrolled in the Know Your Drive program with American Family Insurance. It gives us discounts for safe driving and other benefits like emergency roadside service, which comes in handy no matter where his dreams take him. With Know Your Drive, save up to 20% and get closer to your dreams. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. Ladies, check it out. So strong, so not ripped. What are we talking about? That's the Hefty Ultra Strong Bag. Hefty, Hefty, Hefty! Gimme. Give me the bag? Get Hefty Ultra Strong at a low price. I got your back, you got mine. Think about you all the time. Together we can come through. That's what love's made of. 
taste of home is worth sharing. Plan a perfect staycation at the Madison Concourse Hotel and Governor's Club. Bring the family to enjoy our indoor pool or reconnect with the couple's getaway in our Governor's Club, serving complimentary cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, and breakfast. Gift certificates are available. Visit concoursehotel.com. 614, what if you could buy an item and know that it was going to be used to create strong bonds with young people and help turn their lives around? Sounds pretty great. That's the case with Mentoring Positives, focusing on our youth in the Darbo neighborhood. Our Taylor Lazenby joins us live with more. Hi, Taylor. Hi guys, good morning. Mentoring Positives is all about from our block to your kitchen. The youth involved in this program are challenged to use their entrepreneurship skills when it comes to making and selling products like their off the block salsa and their off the block pizza. Now Will Green is the president of Mentoring Positives and he says the project as a way to keep kids out of trouble in their neighborhoods. The name off the block and Mentoring Positives also represents their hopes of getting off the block and the Darbo Worthington Park neighborhood. That's on Madison's east side. I think as a community, we're looking for outlets for kids that's kind of deep in the, in the, in the system and, and doing um, negative things. And so it's up to us to try to provide something that can hook the kids in. The hook is the kids, our motto, and, um, through the salsa and pizza. Now, what's really cool about the program is the kids really are hands-on and do it all. Each summer, program participants nurture an acre of tomatoes and peppers that they use to produce in their salsa and their pizza sauce. It helps and also sells and supports this pro program to keep it going. Now, to date, Mentoring Positive has sold over $30,000 worth of salsa and pizza. Now, coming up in the next half hour, we're going to find out where exactly in Madison you can purchase some salsa and pizza and help out mentoring positives and these kids. Gosh, sounds like a great program there. Taylor, how long has this been around? So it started back in 2005, and since then it has grown, and they kind of have this great mentorship program. So after the kids graduate, because it's only taking high school kids, once they graduate and transfer out, usually a lot of them come back and help the little kids that are still going through this transition. So it's a really good program. What a great idea. Thanks, Taylor. 616 now. Let's check in with Hattie McLean, who's tracking some snow in the forecast. Hey, Hattie. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, I'm watching some snow and actually some rain start to get a little closer. I'm looking at the Platteville Sky Camera right now, our Queen Bee Radio Sky Camera. Not seeing anything just yet there. All is quiet across southern Wisconsin, but that precipitation is getting a little closer. Take a look at Doppler Track this morning, and you can see some rain and snow lifting north eastward across Iowa. Those snowflakes getting pretty close to southwestern Wisconsin as we speak. Now, temperatures are quite mild, so we're going to see initially a mix of rain and and snow. Our snow chances are pretty high, especially tonight into Saturday for south, south central Wisconsin. Heading into next week, it will be cold, but really just a few chances for flurries here and there. Take a look at those temperatures this morning. We're still well above freezing here in Madison at 35. Janesville, Monroe, and Platteville all in the upper 30s right now. Temperatures aren't expected to move too far, but as you head to the bus stop, I would pack at least some kind of boot, maybe a rain boot or a snow boot, whatever you have, because later on coming home, it's going to be pretty messy. We're looking at a mixture of rain and snow across all of southern Wisconsin with high temperatures in the upper 30s. So don't ruin those tennies today. Pack the boots. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk more about that snow forecast and tell you how much you can expect by the end of the weekend. All right, thanks, Hattie. And as we get ready for the snow, the city of Madison is changing up some of its plowing strategies. A spokesperson for the city says, whatever the weather throws our way this weekend, they'll be ready. Here's the plan, though. Once the snow starts sticking to the roads, that's when the trucks will go out. They'll start plowing and salting the major streets in the city. Brian Johnson says not a lot will change from how they've plowed in the past. However, you may notice uh, them salting fewer streets because of the pandemic. The reason why is that with all of the Madison school districts being virtual, all of the roads that are around the schools, like we don't really need to salt those particular roads because the schools aren't in session. And also with Madison Metro, they're not um, running all the same routes like usual, so we don't have to salt some of those roads either. Johnson adds that they'll save the street division hundreds of tons of salt this year by doing this. If you want to see where the drivers are and where they're going and which routes they won't be salting, you can check out the Streets Division's website.
All right, to the stimulus now, Republican and Democratic lawmakers are trying to come up with a deal on a coronavirus relief package. A bipartisan group of lawmakers has proposed a deal that includes giving the unemployed $300 more a week for 16 weeks, $300 billion in aid for small businesses, and a continued pause on federal student loan payments through the end of April. The plan does not include stimulus checks. Congress is trying to get a bill passed soon because aid programs that were approved back in March, including jobless assistance measures and eviction protections, expire before the end of the year. More than 100 House Republicans are backing President Trump's push to discredit the election results. The latest effort includes a lawsuit brought by the Texas Attorney General against four battleground states, including Wisconsin. Trump's lawyers want the state to throw out more than 220,000 ballots and declare the election void. Legal experts say they doubt the high court will take the suit. In an argument yesterday, a federal judge said siding with President Trump would be, quote, the most remarkable ruling in the history of the court. All right, 620 is your time right now. Still ahead for us on a Friday morning. The first Warren weather team tracking when that snow's moving into Madison today and how it's going to impact you this weekend. And coming up in our next half hour, we're getting an idea of how your student school will keep kids safe without officers in the hallways. Stay with us. Download the Channel 3000 First Warm Weather app today. Hey, call again. Our water makes my skin and hair feel like I'm 90. How do you feel about high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? What? How do you feel about smoother skin and luxurious hair? I feel very good about that. That's the power of water. Toyotathon is on. Now's the time to get a great deal on... Tacoma. RAV4. Camry and more. I'll take it. I'll get this wrapped up for you. I wish I hadn't just unwrapped it. <laughs> right now, during Toyotathon, you can get 0.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2021 Camry or 2021 RAV4. Toyotathon is on. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. I really love the fact that you're able to go individually on each tooth and make sure that it's going to be wider. So this holiday season, if you have yellowing between your teeth or coffee stains near your gum line, just snap, swab, and smile. And each five-minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way. Way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes or an hour and start using the Power Swabs 5 minute solution. Just snap, swab, and smile. After just seven days, the results were awesome. Power Swabs was easy to use every day, and each day I could see it better and better. And from beginning to end, it's definitely wider. Uh, they look clean, they feel clean. Um, and people have made comments about it, which is nice. Call for your five-minute solution to whiter teeth. This holiday season, order Power Swabs and receive up to 40% off the retail price. Get a free Power Swabs Quick Stick Pen with your order. The Quick Stick Pen is your on-the-go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 40% on your purchase and your free Quick Stick Pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen or visit powerswabs.com today. Six twenty-three. We are back. I want to thank Amy for sending in a beautiful photo as she shares her morning with us. You can share yours as well. Just use the hashtag #MyNews3Morning, and we'll share our favorites on the air every time, right around now, every day. So, all right, guys, do you have your uh, favorite winter beverage website, YouGov, which is not a government site, 
has a new survey out that shows what Americans love to drink this time of year. And at the top of the list, it shouldn't surprise anybody, hot chocolate, hot cocoa, right? About a third of Americans polled say hot cocoa is their favorite. Second, eggnog. About a quarter of the people chose eggnog as their favorite, followed by apple cider. Now, Hattie, I'm going to direct this question towards you because last time we talked about eggnog, we did not ask you your take on eggnog. And uh, Rachel uh, called us out on Twitter and said we didn't ask Hattie about <laughs> eggnog. So I want to give you a chance to, to talk to us about eggnog. What do you think? You like it? Don't like it? To set the record straight, not a yeah. huge fan of eggnog. I will be uh -huh. honest. It's a little thick for me, but I do love hot chocolate. And I actually learned a new word called hot schnocklet. Now, I've never schnocklet. heard this before. Huh? It's just basically peppermint schnapps mixed with hot oh. chocolate. But I've never actually Yum. heard it called that. So I've been drinking hot schnocklet all along, <laughs> just never knowing it. That would be my favorite. <laughs> Hey, I think we could all, all right. sign up for a little hot schnocklet, especially with the with the forecast we have in store this weekend, Hattie. <laughs> yeah, I'll be putting some hot chocolate in the crock pot this weekend. We'll probably be using those shovels or even maybe the snow blowers in some parts of southern Wisconsin, so get ready. We do have an alert day in the forecast for tonight and Saturday. That's when most of the snow accumulation will occur. Now, through the day today, we'll see precipitation, but it's going to be a mix. We have an alert day in the forecast. Again, that winter weather advisory starts at midnight tonight. Look for slushy, slippery roads. Take a look at our snow chances ramping up by lunchtime today. We'll see that mix changing over to all snow tonight. And then the snow winds down pretty quickly by Saturday evening. But we'll definitely see some snow through the morning and afternoon hours. All right. Thanks, Hattie. Stick around, folks. News 3 Now This Morning will be back right after this. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I wasn't sleeping well. My neck would be stiff. I had like memory foams, I had feather pillows, and I'd always wake up with neck pain, um, and I had constant headaches. After sleeping on my pillow, I didn't wake up with the headaches, I was more aligned, everything felt good. I didn't realize the connection between the pillow and sleep. When I switched to my pillow, I got a better night's sleep, and I love it. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. I want you to get the best night's sleep of your life. For a limited time, you can get my premium my pillows for the lowest price ever. Regularly $69.98, now only $29.98 with your promo code. Only $29.98. That's a $40 savings. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and it holds that support all night long to take the pressure off your shoulders and keep your neck aligned regardless of your sleeping position. My pillow is machine washable and dryable and comes with a 60 day money back guarantee and an amazing 10 year warranty. Plus, every premium My Pillow is made in the USA. For a limited time, you can get a premium MyPillow for the lowest price ever. Regularly $69.98, now only $29.98. That's a $40 savings with your promo code. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I personally guarantee that my pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. And to help you sleep better, I'm offering you my lowest price ever. Only $29.98 for a queen size premium my pillow. Call or go to mypillow.com to take advantage of Mike's best offer ever. Use the promo code on your screen to get a queen size my pillow premium for only $29.98. Regularly $69.98. Get a king size for just $5 more. It's the lowest price ever. Only $29.98. That's a $40 savings. This is a limited time offer and not available in stores. Don't delay. Order now. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. So, how's saving for the renovation going? All done. I will never understand how you do it. Easy. She saves with BMO Harris. We give you a cash reward for every month you save. So BMO will give me cash for saving money? You bet. Can the subject hold position two, please? How's this? That's odd. That makes saving look good. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. Get a $5 reward every month you save $200 or more in a new BMO Statement Savings Account.
An evening in front of the fire can be so relaxing, but dangerous creosote buildup can cause a chimney fire if not removed. Help protect your home with CSL, the creosote sweeping log. It helps clean your chimney while it burns. Inside your chimney walls, there's a constant buildup of flammable tar and creosote. The active minerals in CSL will reduce those dangerous deposits, making your next fire safer. It's so easy. Burn just once every 60 fires. CSL, the creosote sweeping log. Get CSL. Available at Menards, The Home Depot, True Value, and Walmart. Rain and snow spreading into southern Wisconsin this morning and some snow accumulations by Saturday. Although the details coming up. And breaking overnight, a Wisconsin woman is in the hospital this morning after an officer shot her while responding to a call. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Today is an alert day. There is snow in the forecast, and the city of Madison is getting ready to manage the conditions on the road. The city spokesperson tells us that they'll send out trucks as soon as the snow hits the ground. Meteorologist Hattie McLean is tracking the snow, which could impact your commute home today. Yeah, Hattie, two questions for you. Will this disrupt things, and when do you think we're going to start to see it in Madison? Well, thanks guys. Morning, Chris and Leah. I definitely think it's going to disrupt travel across the area. This is one of the first big snow storms of the season, so we all have to relearn those winter driving skills. Now, it's going to be a wet and heavy snow, so keep that in mind. The snow is expected to start a little bit earlier than what we thought yesterday. We'll still see a mix this morning. Rain and snow not changing to all snow until tonight, but as I mentioned, it is going to be heavy and wet. The snow has prompted a winter weather advisory for parts of southern Wisconsin, Madison and Dane County as well as Rock County and Janesville included in that winter weather advisory. It starts at midnight tonight and goes through 6 p.m. on Saturday. Here's a look at the expected snow. This is what everyone wants to know, right? Where is that heavy band of snow going to set up? Well, likely somewhere across south central Wisconsin. It's a little tough to pinpoint the exact place of this band and where it will be, and it's likely going to be pretty narrow at that. But we could see some amounts in the 5 to 7 inch range, some isolated higher amounts within this band. Most of Dane County and the Madison area will likely come in somewhere around three to five inches. Now there will be sharp cutoffs on the north and south side of this band with much lighter amounts expected there. Here's a look at Doppler track this morning. I've been watching the snow all morning and it's getting pretty close to the Mississippi River Valley. We're seeing some rain across parts of southeastern Iowa, some snow along I-35 and areas north of Des Moines this morning. Here in southern Wisconsin, not seeing anything just yet, but it could be shortly that we start to see some raindrops and snowflakes in far southwestern Wisconsin. The precipitation is likely to arrive in Madison, though, before lunchtime today. Our temperatures are mild, 35 here here in Madison, 37 in Mineral Point and Monroe, 38 this morning in Platteville. Janesville checks in with 39 degrees. With those mild temps, it is going to be a mix of rain and snow initially. Here's a look at your future track forecast model. By 1030, that's uh, snow and rain approaching Madison and then spreading across most of the area by early this afternoon. Again, it will likely be a mix. Take a look at those temperatures, uh, even 35 in the Dells, so a mix is possible there. Heading into tonight, we'll start to see some colder air wrap in behind this system and a changeover to snow from west to east. That rain snow line, though, may hang on in southeastern Wisconsin through much of the morning on Saturday. We'll see that precipitation come to an end Saturday evening. Total amounts, again, highest right through south central Wisconsin. Here's a look at your future track snow potential. And again, some of those numbers getting pretty high. That dark blue shaded area is going to be very narrow, but we could see some amounts in the six to seven inch range. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Snow again winds down on Saturday. Sunday will be dry and good news for those that are looking forward to a white Christmas or keeping their fingers crossed. Temperatures are generally going to stay below freezing so the snow is going to stick around at least for several days. All right, cleaning things up out there, Hattie. Thank you very much. Of course, we'll be tracking this snow all morning and all day, both on air and online. Remember, you can always get updates from the News 3 Now First Warn weather team and how the weather will impact your day. Just download the First Warn weather app.
And now to some breaking news overnight. A woman is in the hospital this morning after a Wauwatosa police officer shot her while responding to a call. It happened around 915 last night. Wauwatosa police say an officer responded to a call for a woman attacking another woman. Police say when the officer found the woman, they got into what they're calling an altercation. That's when the officer shot her. This new video from our news partners in Milwaukee shows protesters gathered at the scene confronting officers. State Patrol, Milwaukee County Sheriff's deputies and the West Dallas Police have all helped in responding. Police didn't say whether the use of deadly force was necessary or whether the officer involved would be on administrative leave. New this morning, we're starting to learn what Madison schools would look like without school resource officers. An ad hoc committee has finalized its budget recommendations for keeping schools safe without police. The State Journal reports the plans want to fund restorative justice training for staff and increased student support. The three to five year plan would also create an advisory group to involve community members, kids and families on how to discipline students for bad behavior. The committee will share its recommendations with the full school board in January. The goal here is to ultimately get it incorporated into the budget process. The search for a Madison based F-16 pilot who crashed in the UP is over. Searchers found the pilot's body yesterday. The plane was on a routine training mission Tuesday night for the 115th fighter wing based out of Truax Field. Investigators are looking into what happened. Meantime, Governor Evers had been keeping track of the search and says that he and his wife share their deepest condolences with the pilot's family and loved ones, as well as everyone else with Wisconsin National Guard. The military will release the pilot's name 24 hours after family is notified. 635 right now, we're following breaking news within the last 10 minutes. The FDA commissioner has issued a statement saying they intend to issue emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine. It cites yesterday's advisory committee meeting as one of the things informing their decision. Now, if the FDA moves to make that decision today, a spokesperson for UW Health says we could start to see the first round of vaccines arrive in Madison early next week and maybe earlier. When vaccines do get here, healthcare workers expect to get several thousand doses. It's unclear, though, how those will be distributed exactly across South Central Wisconsin. There are just over 52,000 Wisconsinites with active COVID cases this morning. The seven-day positivity rate has been declining this week. It now sits just below 29%. These lower daily case totals are suspected to be partly, at least partly, because of a drop in testing. Workers at the Alliant Energy Center say it's been the quietest they've seen things in quite some time. So far, Public Health Madison Dane County has been seeing only half of the traffic they typically see at the testing site. Now, it's not just new tests that are down right now. Across the state, hospitalizations are declining as well. We wanted to learn more about these trends and what's behind them. So Dr. Jeff Potha from UW Health is up early to talk us through it all. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time. We talked to you last half hour and we touched briefly on the expected surge that public health officials were predicting after Thanksgiving. Have we seen any semblance of that surge? We haven't seen a surge in, in patients and you know, we haven't seen this surge in hospitalizations. So um, the optimist in all of us uh, thinks that maybe people did get the message or they know people who were affected by COVID and they took Thanksgiving off. And uh, for anyone in the community that did that, uh, just a grateful thank you uh, from healthcare workers across the state. We really needed to get those numbers down a little bit. They're still very high, but uh, that slight decrease in numbers makes a big difference. You just mentioned the number of people who have to go to the hospital with COVID right now, it's down across the state. What's that picture look like here in our area in Dane County? You know, our slowdown in hospitalizations uh, was a little bit slower than the rest of the state. We still have very high hospitalization rates here in Dane County. Uh, over the last couple of days, numbers have dropped down just a little bit from that peak. So hopeful as the days continue uh, that that lower trend continues here in Dane County too. We report a lot of numbers every morning. I think it's easy to get lost in them. For example, the DHS says 16% of hospital beds across the state are open right now. I'm curious, what exactly does that number mean if you or one of your loved ones needs to go to the hospital right now? Is there space? Yeah, I think that's a great question uh, because when we say, you know, what percent of beds are open, it, it really is helpful to know, is that just physical beds? Is that beds that have staff to run them? Because without staff, the bed's not much use. Um, hospitals are still very full. Uh, it's likely uh, if you need to get into a hospital, there might be a slight delay from the time that uh, you're identified as needing admission to when you can get in. Uh, for the most part, uh, hospitals have been able to make things fit. There are still people who aren't getting their non-urgent, non-emergent procedures 
procedures done. So we'd like to see numbers come down so we can begin doing that again. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're close to really full, but we've come back a little bit where I think that, you know, immediate threat uh, is a bit lessened. Some good perspectives, some good context there. Dr. Pondhoff, thanks so much for waking up, waking up early and talking us through some of this. You bet. All right, 639 right now. A Wisconsin nursing home is getting ready to distribute vaccines to its residents and employees. North Central Healthcare's vaccination team in Wausau has been planning this for months. The team is made up of leadership from infection prevention, skilled nursing, and operations management. They partnered up with Walgreens as the group's primary vaccinator. They won't require their residents to get a vaccine, but they are encouraging it. They expect to get shipments of a vaccine two weeks after it's approved. 639 now. Kids in the Darbo area are mentoring positives. They've been making off-the-block salsa and pizza for over a decade. The pizza-making program is allowing at-risk youth to participate in business and leadership skills. Sounds great, right? News 3 Now's Taylor Lazenby joins us now with more on how it's not just helping kids, but the community as well. Excited to hear about this, Taylor. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right, guys. Good morning. The Off the Block is a program meant to keep kids off the streets and help them explore their creativity. But now it's also helping the community at large. Since its start in early 2005, President Will Green said students have expressed greater confidence in themselves and their ability to succeed at the end of at the end of finishing the program. He says school attendance rates have also improved. Yeah, it's just exciting time through a kind of um, un, un, uh, uh, unknown time, you know, through this pandemic. So um, it's it's pretty exciting for us. We got a lot of exciting stuff going on that I think keeps us going. Now, Will says off the block pizza and their salsa is available for delivery and you can find it inside the Willie Street co-op stores. Now, all three stores will be carrying their different types of pizzas. One is their Wisconsin cheese on their Darbo whole wheat crust. And the next one is their Wisconsin cheese on their Green Bay white crust. And last at the time that I spoke to Will, he said that the kids are trying to create a veggie option pizza and they're always coming up with new ideas and ways to expand their entrepreneurship like we said, and just help out their community. To find out more information on Mentoring Positives, you can log on to our website. That's at channel3000.com. Wow, what a great program, and it's helping out so many kids, and it has been for, for such a long time. And I imagine some of these kids that go through the program, do they end up coming back once they get a little bit older to help out some of the younger ones? They do. They do. They come back and help mentor. They kind of do it like a big brother, big sister thing. Um, but they say it's just a great way to give back. And it's always good to see what new things and new meal items that they're adding on to their things that they can do. And it's so awesome that they can still create this project even during the midst of the pandemic. Really impressive program. I see why they keep coming back. Taylor, thank you. All right, 642 is your time right now on this Friday morning. We do have a new stall vehicle to talk about on the Beltline right now. This is in the westbound lanes at Seminole Highway this morning. Not seeing any delays there quite yet, but we'll keep my our eyes on that so far this morning. As far as today goes, though, your current conditions outside, dry roads to start off today. But things will be changing as we go throughout the day. You can see right now your main travel forecast. Again, all good for the morning commute, and then by around lunchtime, we'll start to see that system move in, giving you the yellow light through the start of the afternoon commute, but then by 6 o'clock tonight, uh, hopefully you will not have to be out on the roads as we will have to deal with those travel hazards out there. Right now, the main conditions will have those wet, slippery roads. Give yourself some more time, extra space. It will be windy over the next day, so make sure that you are taking it easy out there. Make sure your defroster is ready because you'll probably have some frosty windows to deal with as well. Let's take a live look outside right now. The wait is on. We're just hours away from a significant snowfall event for the Madison Metro. Hattie will have her updated alert day forecast when we come back. And top searches 2020 was full of uh, significant moments. And we also learned how to do a lot and even cook a lot. Some of the top recipes when we come back. Since 1902, Carrier has been inventing new ways to make people comfortable. And today, comfort can also mean efficiency. Because being more efficient with your home heating can mean spending less on it. And that's something everyone can get comfortable with. 
If you're ready for carrier comfort, now you can get cool cash rebates of up to $1,650 on a new system. Carrier, turn to the experts. Leading edge heating and air conditioning serving the Madison area. In Jefferson and surrounding counties called Jensen Plumbing and Heating. I love to equal the playing field. I love to help people and allow them to feel like they are powerful instead of powerless. We're with our clients every step of the way. Gingris Thompson and Walks. He has his grandfather's smile. Her mother's eyes. My cheekbones. But will she have my diabetes? My sickle cell anemia. His father's heart disease? Go to joinallofus.org to share your health information and speed up health research breakthroughs. The future of health begins with you. Dolman Cars is having a huge winter sale. Don't miss out on 2017 Ford Escape starting at $11,995 or $185 per month. That's right. You can buy a 2017 Ford Escape starting at $11,995 or $185 per month. Golden Cars is family owned and operated for over 50 years. So just hurry in today and ask for my sister, Crystal the Pistol Gobin. Or my brother, Donovan Gobin. You gotta go to Gobin. GobinCars.com. When roads get wet and your tires are in bad condition, accidents happen. Mina Keys technicians will inspect, repair, or replace your tires as needed to make sure you stay safe on the road. Stop in or make an appointment online today. Mina Key, doing car care right. What you see is important to you. How you see is important to us. We're Shop Co Optical. You'll see. This holiday season, support our local businesses by using the Madison Magazine online Shop Local Holiday Gift Guide. Find the perfect gift locally with unique clothing, discounted gift cards, home decor, books, and more. Find it on madisonmagazine.com today. Wisconsin weather can be frustrating. Get the latest forecast, alerts, and detailed traffic reports from the News 3 Now team on air, online, and download the Channel 3000 First Warn app. Be the first to know what's headed our way. Get more local news now with Channel 3000 Plus, our free digital streaming service that brings you area news and info 24-7 from the News 3 Now team. Channel 3000 Plus. Download it today and watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. 2020 was a year filled with questions, and Google has been keeping track of what we've been searching for the most. And a lot of people have uh, been sharpening their cooking skills this year, right? So here are the top searches for recipes for 2020. People in the U.S. search for sourdough bread an awful lot, whipped coffee, Disney churros, Dole Whip, and the Double Tree cookies. Hmm. Okay, right. if I had a dollar for every sourdough bread I saw on my Instagram, I know that's a popular <laughs> one. Chris, did your wife try that one? Uh, no, no, no. She did the, the whipped coffee, though, for sure. We've definitely tried some, some coffee concoctions. I also Josh, tried the you? whipped coffee. I will say oh, some of these some of these trends have cost me something. I bought matcha for the first time. I bought one of those whipping kind of little machiney guys that you put a battery in and it whips up yeah. your coffee. Um, so it's, you know... Adding to my grocery list, Josh, have you had, you sound like someone who would have an extravagant coffee order. Have you tried to make your own coffee? You know, we actually started making the French press coffee. We get like the special coffee grounds and put them in the little French press machine. And we have a little tea kettle, you heat it up, pour it in there, and then you push it down. And I'm not kidding you, it is some of the best coffee I have ever had. And like, it's been, I can even drink it black. Leah, and that will shock you. I can drink the coffee black in that. So I have learned some good things this year. I'll give it that. I should make a point that I, I pay for Josh's coffee order every once in a while. So I know he has a sugary, sugary uh, coffee order. Hattie, what about you? You strike me as a sourdough bread type of gal. I did try making some sourdough bread, and after a couple <laughs> weeks, I just threw the whole thing out because it was too much work. It is. I couldn't remember to feed it every day and keep it on track, so I was like, <laughs> I'll just buy my bread. It's fine. 
<laughs> All right, well, our forecast for today, this is a good bread-making forecast, though. You'll be inside with cold temperatures and snow falling tomorrow. Today, it's more going to be a rain-snow mix. And right now, things are dry, but alert day is in the forecast for tonight and Saturday. Here's a look at the probability of precipitation. It ramps up pretty quickly this morning, so we're likely to see that rain-snow mix move into the Madison area before lunchtime today. You can keep in mind, it's going to be a mix through the afternoon, so raindrops and snowflakes expected. That could create some slushy conditions on untreated surfaces. Here's a look at Doppler track this morning. The rain and snow is quickly approaching from the south and west, so it's going to be shortly that we'll see some of that precipitation move into far southwestern Wisconsin. Our temperatures are very mild, though, here in southern Wisconsin. We're well above the freezing point right now. Take a look at our temperatures, 35 in Madison, 37 in Platteville, Mineral Point. Even in the Dells, you're up to 34 degrees. So a look at our forecast day planner. Shows you cloudy skies with that rain expected, mixing with snow at times through the afternoon. It'll likely be a mix through the evening commute, then change to some snow later on tonight into tomorrow. Coming up, I'll tell you just how much you may be shoveling by tomorrow night. Ooh, all right, Hattie, thank you very much. 6.49 now, stick around. The morning sprint is coming up after the break. But first... But first, it's December 11th. We want to say happy birthday to Lynette and all the kiddos turning three today. We're so glad you're celebrating with us. We hope you have a great day. We'll be right back. Lucas 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, indoor water park and conference center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Get more for your kitchen now at the Brothers Main Big Kitchen Upgrade Sale. We want you to absolutely love your new kitchen, so you'll get big, big savings on the latest incredible products from GE and our risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee. We want you to be 100% satisfied every time. That's why we're the More Store. The Big Kitchen Upgrade Sale with more selection, more savings, and more kitchen. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-936-5735. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we can save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates. Live better, debt-free. Find out how easy it is by calling now. For the secret the credit card companies don't want you to know, call Credit Associates now and see how much money you could save for free. Call 1-800-936-5735. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Protect the people in your life from COVID-19, you help protect everyone in our community. Learn how you can stop the spread at dhs.wisconsin.gov slash COVID-19.
We have an alert day in effect for tonight and Saturday, and a storm is moving in today. It will bring a mix of rain and snow, creating some slushy and slippery conditions on the roads here in southern Wisconsin. National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory that will start at midnight tonight. Here's a look at our total uh, snow accumulations after we see what's happening on the radar map this morning. Some of that uh, snow and rain is starting to push into far southwestern Wisconsin. It may not be hitting the ground just yet, but it will shortly. Here's a look at those total accumulations. By later on Saturday, there will likely be a band of heavier snow setting up across south central Wisconsin. Thank you, Hattie. As of now, the city of Madison has not declared a snow emergency. They say they'll do that if three or more inches fall and they need to plow residential streets. They'll make that decision before 9 tonight. If it happens, anyone who lives within the snow emergency zone downtown will need to follow alternate side parking rules for the next two nights. If you're unsure on whether you live in that snow emergency zone, you can check out the map we have up on channel3000.com. Breaking overnight, a woman is in the hospital after a Wauwatosa police officer shot her while responding to a call. It happened around 9.15 last night. Wauwatosa police say an officer responded to a call for a woman attacking another woman. Police say when the officer found the woman, they got into what they're calling an altercation. That's when the officer shot her. Police didn't say whether the use of deadly force was necessary or whether the officer involved would be on administrative leave. Now this morning, Milwaukee police are no longer allowed to use chokeholds unless they find themselves in a life or death situation. Our news partners in Milwaukee report the city's police and fire commission voted to adopt the new use of policy, the new use of force policy. It's the first police reform passed in the city since the summer's protests and demands for change from the department. And a sad update to a story we've been following this week. The pilot of a Madison-based F-16 jet that crashed Tuesday has died. Crews have been searching nonstop in Michigan's Upper Peninsula in hopes of finding the pilot who crashed there around 8 o'clock Tuesday night. Their identity will be released 24 hours after family was notified. And we're following some breaking news. Within the last half hour, the FDA commissioner has issued a statement saying they intend to issue emergency use authorization for Pfizer's vaccine. It cites yesterday's advisory committee meeting as one of the things informing that decision. If the FDA moves to make the decision today, a spokesperson for UW Health says we could start to see the first round of vaccines arrive in Madison early next week or maybe even this weekend. There are now just over 52,000 Wisconsinites with active COVID cases. The seven-day positivity rate has been declining this week. It now sits just below 29%. These lower daily case totals are suspected to be at least partly because of a drop in testing. So far, Public Health Madison-Dan County has been seeing only half the traffic they typically see at the Alliant Energy Center. Dr. Jeff Pothoff from UW Health says hospitalizations also down across the state. And a look at weather track, which is satellite and radar combined. It shows you that the precipitation is trying to work its way into southwestern Wisconsin as we speak this morning. It'll reach the Madison area before lunchtime today. Keep in mind, it will be a mix of rain and snow through the afternoon, not changing to snow until much later tonight. But as you head out the door, you might want to grab those rain or snow boots for later on today.